Well, we're counting down today. 51 Sundays left this year. It don't sound like very many when you say it that way, does it? But appreciate every time the Lord lets us be together. Appreciate every time that you come together. And uh, Sister Sabrina was saying about a desire to uh, live closer to God and to do better for God. And uh, not everybody, not even every Christian has that desire. They just want to go to heaven when they die, but they really don't want to die, so they really don't want to go to heaven real soon. So they just stay here as long as they can, They're tied to the earth so much. But uh, I'm concerned with the day that we live in, uh, the time that we live in, that God is, uh, God is wanting us to, to do better. Uh, I thought this morning a little bit, as the service was going, Kathy, that uh, I'm, uh, I had an electrician license, journeyman license, at uh, uh, Paducah, Kentucky. I had to take a big test for it. It's a several-hour test on the, the NEC, National Electric Code, and answer pages of questions. Me and Don Hunt took it together on the same day. And we both passed and got my license, and it said indefinite. Those licenses are supposed to be good for as long as you're alive. Later on, the state of Kentucky made a change and the Paducah license was grandfathered into the state license, so I didn't have to take the test again, but I qualified for a master license, a master journeyman license in Kentucky. But they didn't say indefinite. It was a yearly thing. I had to go to what they called continuing education. I had to requalify every year to keep my license current uh, and pay them, I think is $100. But we, through the years, have desired to qualify each year, Lord, we wanna be your people this year. We wanna be the body of Christ this year. We don't wanna disqualify ourselves from being a a member of the church, and we don't want to disqualify ourselves from being a member of the body. We, that, that continuing education is a good thing. We pay a price by being faithful to God and coming to church. You know, if you're a Christian, normally you're going to go to church somewhere. But is that church qualifying for the body of Christ? Not all churches do. I pray we do. I pray we always do. But you can, you can fail a test. You can disqualify yourself. We don't want to become disqualified, do we? That's why we, we want to just keep getting better and better. And... and uh, Sister Kathy said a good thing. I think it was her that said that, said we're vested in each other, uh, Kathy Sue, and that's true. You know, God is not looking to scar the city of Sykeston in the area to find pure people. Uh, he's looking to find people that he can make pure. God didn't find a pure person when he found me. I was only 12 years old. But I needed, I needed working on. I needed help. I was born in sin, shaping in iniquity. Mom and dad were, grandma and grandpa were, all the way back to when Adam and Eve had their first kids. And we're striving to meet God's qualifications. Some people don't even think about there's a qualification to be a Christian. All you have to do is say, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. Now you're saved and you are a Christian. 
But that don't make you a Christian. I mean, that might initially, you might say, well, I'm a Christian now because I believe in Christ, but what do you do about it? Is there anything to do about it? Do you think, is there anything in your mind that you're supposed to do if you're a Christian? Is there some things in your mind that you're not supposed to do if you're a Christian? Sure. Some people don't know that. Uh, Brother Tommy, there's people been been in connection with the body of Christ and they can live and do any way and said, I'm fine with God, just the way I am. You know, Lord, help us to continue our education to know what you want out of us today. Because is God requiring more and asking more from the members of the body of Christ today in 2022 than did, did, did in 1922, in uh, 1932, 1942, 52. 52 was the year I was born. As far as overcoming, no, Brother David, the qualifications for overcoming today was the same qualifications for overcoming in 1922. A hundred years ago. But for the operation of the body of Christ, the qualifications today may be higher, more strenuous than the qualifications for 1922. Because as we enter into the restored church period, See, to be a part of the restored church, I don't mean hang around the restored church, to be a functioning, operating part of the restored church, we have to die to get there. Somebody was saying, you got to die. Kathy, you said something about dying to get Well, we got to die to become a part of the restored church, not physically. I'm talking about. I'm not talking about physical death. And I'm not talking about your soul dying. I'm talking about carnality dying. That spirit that you were born with that has an effect on your soul. The uh, latter rain church cannot function at the, the glory and the power that is to function with people living carnal lives and having carnal thoughts about God. I mean, we're always going to have carnal thoughts, you know. You go to buy a new car, that's you're going to think carnal thoughts about which is the best car. And what, Ed, you, the prices, and there's, some, there's some things carnally is not sin, but spiritually there are some things that we, the carnal mind, teaches, believes. But this group of people, one of the, I mentioned last night, one of the, 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 the great thing that separates us from other groups of people is knowledge and understanding. But that comes from God dealing with a five-fold ministry. God called not man called. God ordained, not man licensed. God set, not men voting in. It's so strange. I talk with some of the Christian men at work, and uh, they go to different churches in the area. And I appreciate that they love the Lord, that they mention Christ, you know, they talk about how the devil's after him and how the devil's doing bad things, you know. They talk about people going to hell and burning forever. You know, uh, they worship the Holy Ghost. You know, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Holy Ghost. You know, doesn't that feel so strange to hear, to worship the Holy Ghost, Ed? But if the Holy Ghost is a person... And the Holy Ghost is a God. 
then we would, we would be required to worship the Holy Ghost. But we don't worship the Holy Ghost. We, we have the Holy Ghost. We're born again. It's God's Spirit. But they, they speak about uh, voting pastors out or having them quit. You know, I heard our elders tell a minister got a call, pastor got a call. And it was from a church across the country. I said, we've got a, we've got a brand new home. We've got a $250,000 salary. We've got, you know, this, we've got that. We'd like for you to come here. We've been seeking qualifi qualified individuals. We've seen your credentials. We'd like you to come here and be the pastor of this assembly. And so he said, ah, let me pray about it. So he went home and he told his wife, he said, wife, I've got it. we've got an offer for a job. He said, I'm going to pray about it. And while I am, you pack our clothes. <laughs> there was not much praying. The thing is, it's so strange that men hire for jobs and, and they come in and they, they uh, what, do you, what is when you try out? Audition. You, the audition or uh, whatever it is, they come in and, and they try to get the position and they hire them and <laughs> these guys, they, they said, man, he wasn't what we thought he was. Said he just run people off and and said, we don't like him, and said, we're voting him out. I said, you are? They said, yeah. I said, Who are you gonna, who's taking his place? Well, we don't know. We're going to start get, getting people to come in and, and, uh, and, and speak to us. Huh? Interview them. Yeah, interviews. Yeah, see who they like. And then they put them under contract. They do that. Yeah. It, I mean, it's just a job. And that's so foreign. And those are Christian men. They're the difference than them and, and the the other ones that work. The other ones don't. They don't go to church, and they don't. They say they believe in Christ. They just don't go to church. And he say they believe in Christ, and they go to church. But when they're partying, they're all together. <laughs> yeah, they think they're going to go to heaven. It's so strange. I mean, there's, so, there's some things that just really mind-boggle me. These guys, they go out drinking, partying, and, you know, at work, they get to talking to them. And this one here goes to church, and he said, man, I really feel bad for them. They're going to go to hell and burn forever. I said, they are? He said, yeah. He said, they don't, they, don't, they don't confess Christ as their Savior. And I'm thinking... You've got to be kidding me. You know, the next word out of their mouth, after they get done talking to you, they may be cussing and yelling and everything else, but they're going to go to heaven. God has spoke to his children. Brother David, it's so foreign from that. We feel an urgency to do and be better. Because that's what God wants. I'm not just telling you to do and be better. Don't you feel that from God? You feel it from the Lord. We, we want to know more from God. Why did we talk about you know, knowledge and understanding and the word of the Lord? Why did we talk about it so much? Because that's what tells us about God. It tells us what to do and who to be. And tell us where to go and how to get there. It's sad to think, well, I'm going to go to heaven. Well, where's it at? I don't know. How do you get there? Well, I don't know. All I've got to do is just die. When I die, I go to heaven. But I ain't no hurry to die. Well, why ain't you? Well, I just want to stay. I, I would, I would uh, die and go to heaven right now if God had let me. But as long as I'm alive, I've got a duty to serve the Lord. You can't, you know, just 
make yourself die and go to heaven. Yeah, you could die and then resurrect and get forgiveness and go on, but I'm talking about hurrying the process, Sister Alice. We can't hurry it. I told Nella, I said, you know what's worse than dying young? She said, what? I said, dying old. Because you, you go through a lot, of, a lot of suffering, a lot of sickness. Well, I'm talking about somebody that's ready to go home to be with the Lord. You know, at, at I'm 69, at, at uh, 39, if I was ready to go home and be with God and he is ready for me to go, I'd have missed a whole lot of, <laughs> a whole lot of bad things. I could have been in heaven. But God wanted me here and I'd have missed some good things. I appreciate life. I, if it wasn't for the church, I would not appreciate this world right. and this life, Brother David. This is what we live for. Right. And it wasn't, if it wasn't for the kind of church that we have, I'm not voted in. I didn't audition. Uh, you know, I didn't slip money under the table and buy a position. God sent me here. God opened this place. And to understand the operation of the church government in order, do you know the same guys that I talk to, uh, and they're drinking, they're cussing, they're going on, you know, and they think it's okay because they believe Jesus is God's son. And some of them are deacons. They're deacons, Ed, in their church. They're the ones that that push that man out the door or pull another one in. And so their position is a big th position of authority and power in the church. I don't know for sure how they got their place. I don't know if their deacons are voted in or if they just muscle up to the top, you know, and push everybody out of the way. I don't know how they do it for sure on that. But it's controlled by the carnal mind. And they don't have any ideal that they're displeasing to God, that their life is not any better than the other man's life. One said, I believe Jesus is God's son, but he don't go to... He, I believe in Jesus, but he don't go to church. The other one says, I believe in Jesus, and I go to church. Henceforth, he's going to hell, and I'm going to heaven. And there's no justice in that at all. That's why some people do believe. Well, I'm just as good as them. All, they are, so I'll go to heaven when I die, because I'm as good as them. But the the slaw, the the fly in the slough is the fact that they're not going. I'm as good as them, so I'm going to go. You're assuming that they're going to heaven. Use the, they measure themselves. Said, I'm going to them that measure themselves by themselves. We're striving to build a church that will last. I've seen through the years in the body of Christ the inability of, that we've had in recognizing uh, what we have in the church. Always wanting, God send in somebody that can sing real good. <laughs> we had singers. Lord, send in somebody that could be a preacher. Send in somebody that can do this. Sending somebody that can do that. Instead of recognizing what we have. Always looking around. You know, it's, it's almost as bad for a church to come down to the end when the pastor is ready to go off the scene and they start looking across the body. Who, who could we call and have come over here and pastor this church? Well, if it's a body church, why isn't there men there? that grew up and developed, and, and part of the ministry is developing other men for the ministry. I wish we had, 
at least 24 young men studying for the ministry. Ed, I wish we had that. At least 24, yeah. maybe more. It'd be just as easy to talk to 24 men as it is to talk to four men. You know it? We need more. But what do we got? We've got the young men we have, and we have three young men sitting here. Plus Oliver and Jaden. And you might think, well, did you hear Jaden talk the other night that he believes in God? He's got to start, Tommy. Yes. And sometimes adversity makes a better person. Right. Some people that come through real easy, real easy life, they don't they don't mount to much. To yeah. Start. Uncle Bud, Mama said they have a big blub. <laughs> no, my, that was Mama's words. <laughs> and it, but he was babied so bad that it it affected him the rest of his life. I think most every family has that. But adversity can cause people. You go through. I appreciate anybody raised in church that's never gone out and sin. I appreciate that. Appreciate God uh, keeping. The Lord kept me. I didn't go out. But I appreciate people that, that's been out in the world and they throw it all away and come back to God and, and serve the Lord. But we've got... Uh, my grandson, <laughs> Declan and Dalton and DJ were sitting in here today, and I think, Lord, these young men, it, it's not going to be long at all. I mean, it's not going to be long at all that a decision will be made. Which direction are they going to go? What are they going to do for God? Will they feel a call, Brother Tamir, when a young man or young boy would come to the altar and pray through he'd gather around the church and he said now church let's pray for this young man a young boy he said no telling who God will call to the ministry that's how he viewed it when you when you look at uh, boys and they're hitting each other and poking each other and, and you know <laughs> going on as boys go on you think God is there any potential <laughs> <laughs> any potential in there mm -hmm. but God knows God knows I've seen Jada and Michaela sitting here and I said Lord give them good Christian husbands and, and let them be a good Christian wife in this assembly and have children here. They're already playing in the music. We need musicians. We need singers. We need piano players. We need worshipers. We need people to help clean the house, help build the house. And our young people is the, the greatest thing that we have if we can just save them. Now, we can't save them. You, you understand what I'm saying. We do our part, Ed, to, to give them the right direction and the right course in their life. They could be, and the, the more young people we get, Tommy, it'll attract others. Jaden and Oliver... We're going to be getting married and driving a car before long. You say, well, that's going to be a long time. No, it's not. They're going to be having families. They're going to be somewhere. Shane called me this morning. He was talking with me a little bit. And, and he said, he said, Dad, he said, I was thinking that uh, his oldest one, Graham Holland, he said, he's going to probably be... Uh, you know, graduating here and getting married and getting a family before very long, before very many years. He said, that'll, that'll occur. 
And I said, well, Shane, uh, his daughter's name, Amelia. Amelia Rose. I said, Amelia Rose will be. If you raise kids, before you turn around, they're already on their own having children and going their way. God help us to, to yeah, little Norris 4. It won't be long, she'll be 14. Uh-huh, 24. It won't be long, she'll be 20 years go by quick. You might think they don't, but they do. But today is the day of salvation. We feel an urgency to build the church, but I feel an urgency to build people. That's what the church is. I feel an urgency to build your lives bigger, greater, stronger, closer to God. And these young people, to have their lives, they're in, in Sunday school, I hope they're getting good things today. I, I believe they are. Yes. But the thing is, that they'll remember these Sunday school classes. And little Nora Grace, uh, they said, how do you get the Holy Ghost? She went, <laughs> like that, you know. Well, she's getting close. <laughs> she's seen it happen. She's not afraid of it, you know. She, she knows that when somebody's got the Holy Ghost, they talk different than when they don't have the Holy Ghost. One of these days, she'll get it. Jocelyn said uh, the other day, we were having a good service speaking in tongues. I don't understand what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah, I've heard them say, I don't understand what they're saying. <laughs> say, well, they're talking to God in his language. So the, the little time that we have, left. I'm talking to everybody. The youngest one in the house here. Who's the youngest one? No, I mean sitting in here right now. Oh, in here right now. I guess she didn't. No, Becky. 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 The youngest one in the house. Becky's the freshman in the class. You don't have a whole lot of time. No. You don't have a whole lot of time to grow and develop and to be. But you've got enough time. You've got enough time to do it. You can invest your life in God and invest. We're invested in others. Kathy, I appreciate that thought. We're, we're in, invested. If you're invested in something, it's part yours. That work, they had a retirement thing and you become invested in it. That means you had so much money in there, and others had so much money in there. And I've worked at places. I've worked at the railroad. You had to be five years there to be vested. And, and I had, I don't know, it was way over $100,000 in it at four and a half years. You know what happened? When I left the railroad, because I got laid off, Railroad closed. I didn't get laid off. They closed the door. They opened back up later on, but that's already over here. They closed the doors, and my vest, I wasn't fully vested, so it got divided among all the other ones. At least what they said. Well, we're, in, we're vested or invested with each other. And that should cause us to want uh, everybody else to get better. You should want a brethren that preach. You should want the other one that preaches to be better than you. You want to be better, you want them to be better. You want to see our children catch a vision. It's sad. Kids grow up and they don't ever catch a vision and they leave before they even know, they don't even know where they're at. They don't know what they're leaving. And it's your job and my job to, 
manifest before them the word of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, to let them know what they've got, what, what kind of opportunity they have, what, what is here for them, what they're going to get out of it. And we do expect to get something out of this, don't we? I mean, I love God because he's God. But uh, one of the side benefits, Ed, of serving God is eternal life. That's no small thing. I worked at the hospital. They give me a, a paycheck every month, every week, when, or every two weeks. When we worked, you got a paycheck every two weeks. If you didn't work, you didn't get a paycheck. If you didn't, if you didn't work very uh, within so many days, uh, you're no longer an employee, and you didn't get nothing. But if you working, then they they had health insurance. That was a side benefit. Uh, they had vision insurance. They had dental insurance. They had uh, retirement. And I didn't see that retirement. They were putting that in, you know. And uh, but I knew it was there. I knew it was going to come someday when I retired. But here we are. We've got a retirement coming. But we're working and serving God because we love him, because we want to be here. Israel, as the other nations, uh, uh, their economy, a lot of it was based on servitude. Another word for that was slavery. But it was servitude. They could become in, indebted to each other and they become bond servants and everything else. But in the, the old economy of Israel, when a, when a servant paid his debt, he was set free. You know, we don't even, they don't even comprehend that. We can't comprehend that. If you have a debt, you, you either go bankrupt or you, you know, you do something in our society the way our laws are. They yeah, restructure things. But when they got their debt paid or when the year rolled around, if they was an Israelite and you were in bondage to another Israelite, when the year of Jubilee come around, you were to be set free. But if a person didn't want to be set free, if they loved where they was at, loved what they was doing, they'd put their ear to the doorpost. And they're running all through there and they'd put a ring on there. And from then on, when they went around, they were, they were a servant to their master. But they were a servant because they wanted to be a servant. That's, that's an altogether different attitude. And you could have 20 masters and 20 servants in a room. And one of them says, Servant, come here. Nineteen servants wouldn't do nothing. But one would, would say, what do you need, Master? What can I do for you? How can I help? Because that Master had a servant. We've got a Master. It's not me. It's not Brother Wren. It's not Brother Sodders. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And we said it, a, a, a beck and call. He said, I've got something I want you to do. Lord, what do you want me to do? I'm willing to do anything. Just let me know. Do you know we're desiring for God to let us know his will for today? What does God want us to do January the 2nd, 2022? I believe we're doing. I believe we're doing right now what God wants us to do today. And it's always building God's kingdom. But God may want you to do more in the church. More in your personal life. Your personal life is that. It's your personal life. 
That's your, that's that personal relationship that was mentioned last night. You have a personal relationship with God. Of how you live for Him. What you think about Him. What you think about yourself. What you think about others. How you treat other people. How you treat yourself. How you treat God. God sees all of those things. And you're His servant. But we're not slaves because we have to be. That was called a love slave. We're here because we want to be. Someone asked me one time, they said, How do you know when you're in a jailhouse? See, Jesus went and opened up the prisons. And it wasn't, it, it wasn't Roman prisons. It was synagogues. He went and opened up the prison houses. He said, how do you know when you're in a prison house? I said, when you want to leave, you can't. People try to force you, try to make you. I hope nobody, I hope nobody feels coerced or forced to serve God here in this assembly. Faithfulness is a good thing, but it has to come from the heart. Obedience is a good thing, but it has to come from the heart. Growing in God is a good thing, but it has to come from the heart. There's no forced growth. There's no forced, forced labor. Somebody said something to me about someone working real hard. They said, you, you working them too hard. They may, they may get tired of it and leave. And I said, I ain't working them at all. I said, I, I'm not making anybody do nothing. But if a person wants to work, let them work. The more you work, the more you give, the more you grow in God. Brother, we Brother Wesley Laux, a man that said, I'm glad to be here one more time. He had a bunch of kids, didn't he? I mean a bunch of kids. And he was going to a body church in, in uh, Chester, Illinois. Brother Larley was the pastor there. And they took an offering. Brother Laux come up and handed him money. He said, Brother Laux. He said, you keep this money. He said, them little kids, their shoes are worn out. Some of them, their toes are sticking out of their shoes. He said, you, you don't put this money in the church. You keep this money. Brother Lauk said, no. He said, we're taking an offering, and God told me to put this in. And the Lord will make up the difference for my kids. If somebody wants to give more in time and in effort than someone else, let people develop. Let people grow. It could be that you'd want to labor more, read more, study more. Pray more, worship more, testify more, preach more, sing more. Whatever you can for God. Grow in the Lord. Not everybody grows at the same rate. Not everybody grows to the same stature. You know? The other day they said, Tommy, I think it was Tommy, said he said, he said, I go to the big and tall men. Is that what it was? Big and tall men when I buy my clothes. I said, well, I go to the big and short men when I buy mine. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody's the same, are we? No. <laughs> but God loves everyone. You don't have to be six foot four, you know, 200 pounds for God to love you. 
thank God. But you do have to be, have a heart that you want to serve him. And how do you serve God except it be building his kingdom? What more could you do for the Lord today except building his kingdom? The way you build his kingdom, first and foremost, you build your personal life. Your personal contact, your personal relationship with God. And then you build your contact with God's children. You invest your life into each other. I've had so many people in the church, Sister Alice, that I grew up in through the years, old saints that vested in my life. You know, they just all they have to do is say, come up, a young man said, oh, we're so glad you're here. We, we so appreciate you. You know, and... and that didn't make me want to go away and not come back. <laughs> that made me want to come back. Sure. You know? Yeah, when he come up and say, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, why are you dressed like you are? Your shoes ain't shining, and, and you don't ever get up and say anything worth hearing. Oh, my. You know? I said, well, I don't guess you want me here. I'll just leave you. Okay, that door swings both ways. Don't let it hit you on the way out. Well, what kind of attitude is that? Bad. It's a bad <laughs> attitude. But people invested their time in me. And there were some men that were, they were just natural, spiritual encouragers. You get up and Try to speak, and they say, oh, you did such a good job. I look back now, and I think, man, that was, I hope the Lord don't charge them with lying. <laughs> no, but they enjoyed it, yeah, Brother Ramsey, br brother, uh, brother Raymond Hunt. He was like that. Oh, you did such a good job. We so appreciate you. We so appreciate your family, your kids. They're so well behaved, <laughs> you know. And all the different things that were said that was so kind. Be kind. Be uplifting. You don't know what it means to young people. Say, so, boy, we sure appreciate you being here. We missed you last weekend when you didn't get a time. We, we appreciate you being here this weekend. Our, my grandsons, they don't always get a come. And, and uh, just to talk to them. Acknowledge them. They're there. Don't just walk by them like, hmm. <laughs> you ever had that happen? People walk by and they go, hmm. And they walk up to somebody else. Hey, hi. Hi, young man. <laughs> I've seen your dad here in the church. If your dad wasn't in the church, what would it, you know? Ed, I, I kind of grew, I kind of had my feelings out at times. We'd go, I come to church, I... Now, I don't know why, maybe I shouldn't tell this, but I guess I will. I, we didn't have much, but I got a brand new pair of shoes. And man, I was just so proud of them. And I wore them to church for the first time. And I walked up to one of the sisters that I thought so much of. And I said, look here at my brand new shoes. She said, what's that on the side? I said, well, it's some little designs. She said, that's a spade, a heart, a club, and a diamond. You shouldn't be wearing them kind of shoes. <laughs> and I thought, well, I don't guess I'll wear them to church anymore. Made you a gambler, didn't it? Yeah, made me a you and Kenny Rogers. Yeah, me and, yeah. a gambler. <laughs> and, and my heart just sunk, sure. and I felt so bad as if somebody slapped me in the face. Well, I didn't wear them shoes no more. I put my old shoes back on to come back to church, and I didn't show them off. <laughs> but it had an effect on a young man's life. I could have took that as an insult, but if this is worth anything, it's worth everything. And 
uh, commenting, making kind comments, being kind, doesn't cost you nothing. It'll, in the long run, it'll make you a better person and it helps other people become better. So, I could have been run off, but I wasn't, thank God. And we could run people off, but Lord, let's do things to keep them, to help them, to get a vision, to get understanding, to get knowledge, to find their place in God's kingdom. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. This is going to be a special year. 2022. I don't know what all is going to happen this year, but I expect a lot of things to happen this year. I expect to see growth in the church, spiritually. I expect to see growth in the church numerically. I would to God that people that used to be here would come back, but if they don't, God won't hold other people off, Ed. He'll let somebody come in and get the Holy Ghost and become a part of us, or they may come in with the Holy Ghost. They're just going to quit worshiping it. <laughs> They'll start worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ and God because they'll find out what the Holy Ghost is. It's God's Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid of God's Spirit. Little, nor Grace is not afraid of God's Spirit. Amen. And she's only four years old. Because she's around it enough that it don't scare her. It does scare some people. I don't mean just shouting and hollering. That scares a lot of people. <laughs> but I mean when he just comes in and you feel him so heavy. That scares some people. They don't know what they're feeling. What is that? I felt something strange. Some people like it and some people run. Some people will come back and say, I, I felt something and I want more of it, whatever it is. I don't know what it is about this place, but whatever it is, I want it. So God let us portray, portray the Lord Jesus Christ and his kingdom. And Lord, help us qualify. I was so glad about last night's service, January the 1st, 2022. I felt God letting us know we've qualified this year. We've qualified at the beginning of this year. Lord, don't let us disqualify ourselves. Let us keep qualifying. Let us keep our continuing education. Keep learning. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and spirit of counsel. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and spirit of counsel. There's four of the seven spirits of God. And as we grow and develop, we should become better at saving ourselves, Said, so save yourself from this untoward generation. We ought to become better at saving ourselves and helping save others. And children need to be saved from the world that influences them and is around them. I would to God that we had 24 hour influence on all of our children, but we don't. But we can do the best we can with what we have. All right.